Hey, what's going on, guys? It's the Short Sports Show. I'm your host, Daniel Short. Today is Monday, February 14th, 2014. And uh, today's last day of the NFL Combine. It's all wrapped up, basically. Uh, I'm actually watching it right now as this show is going on. Uh, the defensive linemen and linebackers are only on for today. Everybody else is done. And uh, there's been some interesting news around the NFL Combine uh, with players leaving for specific reasons, some medical reasons, and uh, also just, you know, the top performers in the NFL Combine, obviously including Johnny Manziel and Jadavion Clowney headlining uh, both of those. Uh, but first, we're talk about some college football news. Not a whole lot going on today. Uh, it's more just talking about the NFL Combine. But for right now, college football-wise, uh, Clemson running back Tyson die Ter- tore his Achilles tendon uh, last Friday during a workout and will miss spring practice he was competing for the first string spot along with another running back and uh, could return possible possibly return for the o- season opener against Georgia August 30th uh, but no clue for right now and, and, and that's a huge uh, blow for Clemson uh, for their talent wise on the running backs you know having to rebuild not having um, Taj Boyd as a quarterback you know needing some experience um, offensively and losing die will will hurt them Uh, former Penn State assistant coach Tom Bradley agrees to become a senior associate head coach (laughs) I don't know what what that means I guess that's just you know giving you know his word every now and then but a senior associate head coach uh, at West Virginia he coached for 33 years under coach Paterno um, and now will be at West Virginia with Dan Hogerson and that staff Uh, University of Miami here we go again uh, is to investigate possible secondary uh, NCAA rule violation by the football program last year they began the three-year uh, probation and lost four sco- or excuse me nine scholarships and uh, now having another messed up situation it's just Miami what are you doing what are you doing come on now and also Minnesota head coach uh, Jerry Kill agrees to a one year extension with Minnesota contract will now run through the 2018 season uh, and also got a raise of one million dollar raise so that, that's that's not too bad now um, one thing is though now he is a very good head coach coming off there I, I believe this is their first eight win season um, you know he's a, he's a very good coach uh, but if in case people don't know he has epilepsy and he has seizures on and off off the field and you know I, I find that as a as a concern to why you would give him an extension now I, again he is a good coach and that shouldn't be you know taken away or anything but you know how is that going to affect players, you know, not knowing which week, you know, he might have one. I believe what he had, I know he had two for sure this season. Uh, I might've had more, but it's as, as you know, if I'm thinking about going to that university as a player, and I got to think, you know, this coach could, you know, have a seizure in the middle of practice in the middle of a meeting. You never know. Um, and so, you, you know, you would think maybe it's time to move, forward with the program and and you know let this guy's contract go out and then go and find a new head coach um but i mean he's still a good co- good head coach um and he's, he's done a great w- uh with that program that believe what took him to the texas bowl against uh texas tech and end up losing but still pretty good year for minnesota and uh they play tcu this season so that'd be an interesting matchup uh, thankfully it's in fort worth and not in minnesota because uh, i don't want to play in a cold stadium and uh that's basically it for college football not a whole lot of news and probably won't be until uh the pro days start coming up and uh even though it's more nfl type stuff uh but spring practices should start late um or mid-march somewhere around there late march uh spring practices should start going um NFL wise a second wide or second Ravens player is arrested in just one week this time it's wide receiver Devontae Thompson was arrested on su- uh suspension sus- <laughs> possession I don't know why I put suspension <laughs> uh possession of possess uh marijuana and uh last Friday was a backup it's only played 13 games uh in the past two seasons had a $7,000 bond um 
But it's just, Ravens, what is going on? You, you have no control of your players right now. You're looking like the Dolphins, just no control. And, you know, another player is arrested. Um, and obviously the other player was Ray Rice. And that situation, it's it look, it's it's going crazy right now. What's going on? It, you know, there is serious talk that you know Ray Rice may not be with the team because you know you, you got to look at it as a management. You know, most people look at it as a fan perspective and say it's Ray Rice. You know, they can't let him go. He just had one bad year. He's still really good. He still could be an All Pro running back or excuse me, Pro Bowl running back and do all those type of things. But you know, you got to think this off the field thing what if there's more to it and, and this looks so bad on the Ravens part right now uh, and they're trying to figure out what they can do to reestablish you know a positive type um you know I guess not really influence but a, a reflection for Ray Rice try to get him I don't know try to get something resolved here for Ray Rice and get something going because it is not looking good for him and you know I'm not saying Ray Rice is not going to be with the team but I wouldn't be surprised, um, you know, how things would work out with the contract situation and things like that. But it's just a bad situation for the Ravens right now. Um, also, the NFL is to penalize players and coaches and anybody really in the NFL uh, for using the N-word. It'll be a 15-yard penalty and... Uh, believe this will happen starting this season i guess it, this word is being used a lot and referees are just starting to hear it more maybe it's getting picked up on the tv and they're trying to just cut it down and just be like yo let's try not to use this word uh but you know some players are saying that this isn't going to work that the players are still going to use it and you know just penalties are just going to come out but uh it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the referees are going to have to just you know throw the flag and, and let people know what the penalty is and that their team just lost 15 yards because a player decided to use the n-word um either you know just randomly or just saying it on, you know on purpose of uh, who knows who knows very weird uh but the nfl to penalize uh people you players coaches staff whatever um for using the n-word uh and here's the most interesting thing that has happened in the nfl combine so far you know we can look at what the players have done we can you know say what their 40 time bench reps uh all these different things Who, who's been the surprising player uh who's been the most disappointing we bring all these things up but no one could have saw uh this and, and you know i mean it's not something you pro you know project but an interesting story came up and that's san diego state running back adam Mew, Mew, muma muma i hope i'm saying that last name right san diego state running back adam muma left the nfl combine after quote god told me to sit down be quiet and enjoy the peace and also later saying that god told him to leave the nfl combine because he would be playing for his dream team and that's the Seattle Seahawks. He even went as far as changing his Twitter and saying that he's wearing number eight for the Seattle Seahawks. That, it, that would be his jersey number, I guess, for practice or, you know, for off season because obviously running backs won't wear eight when they're actually playing on the field. Either way, um, this has been a very interesting story. He is ranked as a 24th overall running back uh, and is projected to be a fourth to a seventh round pick. Um, he had 1,200 rushing yards, 15 touchdowns as a uh, as a, I guess a co-starter last season, uh, he was only a junior too. I mean, so check this out. I mean, this guy can actually be really good running back. One, I disagree with this decision to leave as a junior. Now, I don't know his, his situation at home. He maybe needed the money, you know, and saw that his stats came up that he could get drafted, you know, and he took that opportunity. But check this out: twelve hundred rushing yards, fifteen touchdowns as a co-starter. His backup running back had, I believe, 800 rushing yards with him. So he shared time. And if two, both of those running backs, almost, you know, one rushed, obviously, Adam rushing for 1,200, the other guy rushing for 800, you got to think, what if he had majority, if Adam had majority of the playing time? You know, you think about those numbers, you know, going up, maybe 1,600 yards, maybe 17, 1,800 rushing yards, you know, looking pretty good, maybe another, you know, five or six touchdowns here and there you're looking at a pretty top running back right there you know and then if he would have stayed for his senior year I mean I guess you know he's still gonna have to split time 
uh, with that other guy who's apparently is is very good as well, having 800 rushing yards, splitting time. You know, he's got to think this guy can be pretty solid. But um, one thing that concerns me now, if you know, uh, if if he was really told, God God told him to leave the NFL combine. You know, that's great, but you got to look at it as you know, a scout's mind right here, especially for the NFL combine. You got to think, okay, if this guy's saying he's leaving because God told him so and that he played for the Seattle Seahawks, well, now you just narrowed every team down to say, okay, well, that's where he wants to go. Cut him off the list. Let's, let's find another running back. Boom, 31 teams. And if the Seahawks weren't even looking at you, buddy, that can hurt you now. Um, but main thing is, Okay, what if we do sign him? What if we draft him in the fourth through seventh round? We pick him up, and what if you know he he says midway through uh you know through the off season and and through the preseason really? What if he says God told God told me to go play baseball now? You know, so what? He's just gonna leave on you, and, and you just wasted a pick just like that. You know, now you're thinking this guy. What if he's not really, you know? committed or something you know it's I don't know I don't think this guy really took the right approach I mean it's kind of weird but it's just uh he could have hurt himself right there just leaving the NFL combine uh I mean it can't really help his draft stock but he does have his pro day coming up next month uh and he can just show uh scouts what he can do there and if he impresses them enough with 40 uh you know and all the route runnings the interviews all that other stuff that comes with it uh you know might be able to still help himself here but this still kind of doesn't look good but it does get his name out there that's for sure <laughs> they got his name out there uh also 49ers and wide receiver Anquan Bolden are very close to a deal this has been said for about two and a half days now and no deal has happened but apparently they are very very close to a deal but teams that are not close to a deal is Titans running back Chris Johnson. They have met over the NFL Combine, and agents met with the team, and they were thinking the contract was going to be done right then and there, and nothing happened. They left the meeting, and no deal. So we'll have to see how that works out with Chris Johnson and the Tennessee Titans. Uh, But NFL Combine-wise, this has been pretty good. Running back from Kent State, Dre Archer. Came very close to Chris Johnson. Speaking of Chris Johnson, came very close to Chris Johnson's fastest 40 time in the NFL Combine uh, record. Uh, Dre Archer had a 4.2640. That is an official time, 4.26. Uh, and Chris Johnson's was a 4.24. Um, very, very close. And this was the guy that everybody was saying if there was a player to break. Uh, Chris Johnson's record, it was Kent State's running back, Dre Archer, because of the speed this guy has and everything that people have watched him. They just said, this guy has the ability to do it. And even uh, Chris Johnson came out on Twitter saying, uh, quote, he's nervous. Or, well, quote, Chris Johnson's nervous. That uh, That's not really a quote. But anyways, he said on Twitter that he was nervous about it because Dre Archer, he knew that he uh, could possibly get it done. But it stays intact. Chris Johnson still has the record with a 4.24 40 time. Uh, and Dre Archer, oh, just so close. But Dre Archer did beat the record um, from last year's. Last year's was Marquise Goodwin, the um, Buffalo Bills wide receiver, who had a 4.27 uh, 40 time. And Archer beat it by 4.26. Um, but other news, obviously, the main players that stick out are Johnny Manziel and Jadavion Clowney. Johnny Manziel ran an official 4.6840 time uh, with a 31.5 vertical. Uh, very, very good for Johnny Manziel. Everybody at first, you know, the unofficial time was a 4.56, and I was thinking, whoa, this is crazy. I mean, still 4.6 is fast. I mean, it's really almost a 4.7. So then you got to link. Oh, okay. Maybe not too fast. But if Johnny Manziel did run the official time of 4.56, that would be incredible. But either way, Johnny Manziel, um, 4.68. Logan Thomas, quarterback for Virginia Tech, led quarterbacks in the 40 with a 4.61. And uh, 
One of my favorite quarterbacks in this draft class is Clemson's quarterback, Taj Boyd. He had a 4.8440. So pretty solid, pretty solid. I mean, he's he's kind of got a little bit uh, of meat on him. So he's, you know, he's not, you know, too mobile, but uh, still pretty solid for him. But Jadavion Clowney is the one that shocked everybody with the 40 time. If anybody projected him to run what he did, oh, you either are... A really good guesser, or that's about it. Because Jadavion Clowney at six foot six, two hundred and sixty plus pounds, ran a four point four seven. Unofficial time, actually, I think the official time was a four point five something. Uh, they're talking to him right now on the NFL Combine on NFL Network. I'm watching it, and it's not bringing it up. It's just showing his height and weight. They should bring it up pretty soon. But I know they did announce the official time. I think I believe it was a 4.5 something. Either way, for a six foot five, one fourth inch guy, uh, and 266 pounds to run a 4.5 is incredible. Johnny Manziel, 5'11", 207 pounds, runs a 4.6, and Jadavion Clowney, 6'5", 266, runs a 4.5 incredible but that's that's the bright news for Dave, Davion Clowney that's very good obviously the bad side of it is only 21 reps of 225 uh bench reps that was it for him and you know most people think oh that you know that's good 225 pounds 21 reps for defense alignment that you know that'd be pretty good not really not really and this is why this is why I say that Brady Quinn Quarterback, we all we all know Brady Quinn, good old Brady Quinn. In 2007, that was his you know year being drafted. He did 24 reps, 24 reps, and he's what six three. You know, obviously he. It doesn't matter how tall he is or how much he weighs. He's smaller than Jadavion Clowney. And for for Clowney not to get more than Brady Quinn, now obviously he's not going in. In there, you know, saying, okay, this is how much Brady Quinn did. I got to do more than him. No, he's not saying that. He probably doesn't even know how much Brady Quinn does or did. But just to think, you know, okay, you got to look at, you know, the your at least your specific position. Who has done the most? What is the average? What is the least? I got to get, obviously, above average and try to get, the, you know, obviously, as most as you can. But... For him just to do 21 reps while Brady Quinn back in 2007 did 24, how strong are you, dude? How strong are you? Uh, I'm just saying, I feel like he should have done a lot more than that. But he did help himself, obviously, with that 40 time with a 4.5 official time. That's incredible uh, for him to do that. But other than that, that's been about it for the NFL Combine for the main stars out there. Uh, that we all have been looking for, obviously, for Johnny Manziel, Jadavion Clowney. Um, but one guy I want to talk about is Logan Thomas. Now, what was it, back in his sophomore year? I believe it was sophomore year. That was when Virginia Tech did really good. They're high ranking. Um, everybody was talking about how Logan Thomas could be the first overall pick if he, would, if he could get in, you know, if he could be drafted that year, he could be one of the top quarterbacks. Then the past two years, he's just fell off. Virginia Tech has been pretty bad and so has he. But at 6 foot 6, this guy, you know, they compare him basically to Cam Newton because of his size, the arm strength that he has. The only drawback is, you know, his accuracy and not being consistent. Um and, you know, where is he at in mentally in the game? But I think, you know, I, and at first I was a fan of Logan Thomas then, but then, you know, obviously when it got worse, it was just like, okay, now we know who this guy just had one, you know, good year, and it's just kind of just fell off. But to be honest with you, I would take a shot at him in the draft. Obviously, late in the draft, I would take him. Um, but, I mean, you can't go wrong with the 6'6 guy. He's, he's a little bit mobile. I mean, he, obviously he is. He ran a 4'6'1", so he actually, yeah, he is pretty mobile, um, especially for that size. You know, strong guy. He's got the he's got the you know the strength to throw the ball down the field. It just doesn't have too much accuracy. But you can work on that because you know he's not going to be a starter the first year he's there unless you know you have a ton of injuries and all your quarterbacks go down. And then you got to put him in. But if, you know, not looking at that, you know, this is a guy you can develop two, three, four years, 
and you're looking at a, a big guy that has the game, you know, knowledge around him, has experience by that time, and at six foot six, there's a lot you could do with that guy. So I, I don't know. Do- Logan Thomas is someone you know I would really consider laying the rounds, you know, fourth, fifth, and I doubt he's still there in the sixth round. Um, but that is someone to look at. Logan Thomas really did impress a lot of people um, at, at this NFL Combine. But other than that, guys, that's basically it for today's show. The NFL Combine is all day on NFL Network. You guys can go check that out. Um, today is just defense alignment and linebackers, and that is it for the NFL Combine. And next thing to look at is uh, free agency. That's the next countdown for us, at, and that is 15 days away from now is the uh, – free agency and then what's after that I guess you know we also got pro days we can look at um but other than that you know still got time uh, also Michael Sam they're now showing they're talking about him right now a 491 uh was his 40 yard dash but man that's how did Davion Clowney get a 4 5 that is incredible um also, one thing I guess I could throw in there that I just now thought about now that they're talking about Michael Sam. So I posted on – actually, someone else posted on Twitter, and I saw um, it was a Baylor uh, – University of Baylor, Baylor University, whatever they're called, the Baylor Bears uh, baseball pitcher. Uh, it's on my, on, the, on my Facebook page. He posted on there and said, uh, why is it that Michael Sam gets a lot of praise by the media and other things like that? Because he came out and said that, you know, he's openly gay, whatever. But Tim Tebow, when all he did, all he did, he never even tried to make it out. And he never, you know, tried to just come out and say, you know, all this stuff. He All he did was pray before the game. And people criticized so much on Tim Tebow. And now, now I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm, you know, I understand they criticize his playing, that he throws like a duck, whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just... They criticize so much on Tim Tebow because all he does is pray before a game, and, and they shoot him down. Michael Sam comes out and says he's gay. Everybody's okay, you know. Every everything you know is so positive about. It. Not saying there should be something negative, but I'm just saying you know, really, you weigh the two. I don't know, and that's obviously different opinions. But um, I, I I retweeted it. I put it on my Facebook page for people, you know, comment on. But it was just something interesting to see, and I never really thought about it like that. Uh, but that is something to look at. So other other than that, guys, next show will be this Friday, Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio. Go ahead and check it out over there. Past episodes are on YouTube, the short sports show. Also have discussion videos that you guys can go check out exclusive to YouTube. Just type in the short sports show. Leave a like, favorite, comment, subscribe while you are there. Follow me on Twitter at short underscore Sports 24-7, and uh, that is about it. NFL Combine wraps up today. It's been exciting. A lot of breaking, well, not well, not breaking news, but a lot of just breaking records, I guess. Close for Dre Archer to beat Chris Johnson's record, all that good stuff. I will see you guys this Friday, and uh, we will recap some other news going around this week, and uh, hopefully there's some other news coming around because now there's that slow point again where we're waiting for free agency and you know pro days all that other stuff that'll get closer anyways guys i will see you this friday i am out god first god bless